Jeff Montgomery here from Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Today we're going to do a side bolt release on a Remington Model 700. The bolt release we have in question is made by Long Rifles Incorporated. It's made out of 4140 chrome molly steel and hardened to the appropriate hardness. Uh, basically it's going to be installed right about here. So we have to machine out a pocket for this to sit in. And then there is a through hole uh, with a spring. So we'll be drilling through this uh, in order to capture it there in the, in the receiver. Uh, fairly straightforward job, uh, minimal tooling. It's best to do this on a milling machine, which we happen to have. So we're going to be using that. Um, tooling is going to consist of a one quarter inch uh, end, end mill. Um, square cutting end mill, and then a 1 8 inch end mill, and also a number 47 drill uh, to achieve the diameter of the pin. Um, so we're going to go over to the mill, uh, get this mounted in the vise, um, establish our edges, uh, get some dimensions going, uh, and then machine this uh, pocket for the side bolt release. All right, over here at our milling machine, um, we've got a 6 inch vise. Typical milling vise, it's kind of a Kurt style. Um, so we've got this uh, nice block made by Precision Reflex. Um, it's just a nice machined aluminum block that holds uh, Remington style receivers. So you can do work like this. So since we've got one flat and one round, I'm gonna use one parallel in the back just to hold the, the flat end of this jig. Slide it in. And then gently come in and clamp the work piece. Make sure everything's square and straight. And I'm not crushing anything. I don't want to be crushing. Okay, so the milling machine vise is snugged up, but of course I do not want to actually crush the rear bridge here, so. This should be plenty of force uh, clamping pressure for the machining operation we'll be, we'll be doing. Uh, nothing, nothing major. So next step, I've already got my edge finder installed. So we'll go ahead and um, we need a center line of the entire action. So I feel like that's best achieved here at the front where it's perfectly round or the roundest feature uh, of the uh, action. I've already measured the actual action diameter here at the front and I got one inch 357 thousandths. So that divided by two gives us 0.6785. So that will be the exact center line of this action. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and touch off on this flat back here where the actual bolt stop slash release will be installed. 6785, confirm. So now that's our center line. We'll go ahead and give us a zero for that. back down to where we're actually going to do the business. Should be zero again. Okay, we're looking good there. Go ahead and get the edge finder out. Okay, come down and touch off on the actual part and bring our stop up, our spindle stop. So we're going to use the Z to actually control our depth. So zero, the Z. So before that, before I do any depth, we're actually just going to go to position and do a scratch pass, make sure everything looks copacetic. Uh, if it does, which it should, uh, we'll go ahead and do the rest of the depth.
Okay, so I've got the pocket cut to specified dimensions. Anyway, we got 975 edge to uh, edge to edge on the out on the pocket. Uh, what is that? 720 um, for the through hole. Um, and a radius on each corner of the internal hole of 0 0.0314. I achieved that by using that tiny little um, 1 16th inch end mill. And so all that does is gives us the radius required for that internal pocket um, for the uh, bolt stop slash release to actually function. So, all we got to do now is change our setup and do our through hole for the pin. So real quick, just while we're in the vise. Okay, so the part drops right in. We're perfectly flush here. And we've got the camming action. Okay, so got it out of the... Keep forgetting these guys' names. Precision reflex um, jig. Oops. And so <clears throat> this through hole, the print is showing the location is based off the center line of the receiver. So uh, I'll show an image of the print. <clears throat> Our location is. 0.225 from here to the hole, which will be somewhere in there, corresponding with the part there. All right, so there's the hole, 225 from here to right around there. Then um, our distance from center is 603. Somewhere in there. So, best way I can think of to do this is to measure our outside diameter here. Divide that in half. That'll get us our center line. And then come up 603. So let's measure this guy. Find a good place to measure off of. Uh, what about here? One point three five seven five five. So we're not going to worry about the millionths and the tenths are not really critical here. One point three five seven. So we'll call it one point three five eight. We'll just round up. Okay, one point three five eight. Divided by two, one point three five five eight divided by two, six seventy nine will be our center line. All right, so let's get this in the vise. Uh, touch off on our edge finder, get some uh, edges established, some zeros, and then we'll poke a hole through there. Okay, we've got the receiver. Back in the mill vise, best way I have to do this is two V blocks. Uh, I've leveled this, both axes. Um, so now we're just going to touch off on the edge finder, get our edge, establish our center line. And then I've got another way to figure out our distance this way since I can't touch off on, on this surface anymore. Okay, uh, now we're set up to going to be spot facing that, give us a little flat to drill through. So first op is just going to do uh, do a small flat with the uh, one eighth inch end mill.
So there's the cut through hole. Turned out very nice. So a little bit of deburring. Let's just go in the inside there. Knock off any burrs. Nice and smooth. Okay, let's stick this guy in. <clears throat> so the Long Rifles Ink bolt stop has a little spring that goes in that pocket. So, we're just going to use some gunsmith glue to help it stay. <clears throat> just, just some red grease. A little dab will do you. Too much will screw you. Okay, so that just keeps it held in. Right, so, okay, this goes here. And then the pin. Perfect. Perfect. All right, final test. The bolt. The bolt. Thrower. Okay, goes in perfectly. That is good. Verify we're clear of our... So that's going to clear the internal magazine, uh, allowing it to pick up around, so that's important. <laughs> and it closes. Obviously, it's not going to affect that. And then release. That's what you want. So we are flush, flush there. Positive engagement. A little side note here. <clears throat> This customer bought a <clears throat> PTG bolt, and they do good work. I have not seen these carbon wrapped style, so that's kind of kind of clever. He got this a couple thousandths undersize of his raceway. Comes with a M16 extractor injector already installed. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. If only they could fix their wait times. Yeah. And so this <clears throat> bolt stop is designed so it floats a little bit. That's an elliptical hole through the stop itself. So it allows a little bit of play. So instead of the bolt stop slamming into the pin, it actually slams into the back of the receiver there. So all this material hits the back of the, the receiver steel rather than putting stress on your pin. So that's a pretty cool design. Forward, 
back, slam it back here instead of the pin. The pin's still floating in there. Cool. That is a successful job. We're going to wrap this up, call it good. Thank you very much for watching. This is Jeff with Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Go ahead and uh, send me a send me a message if you want to if you're interested in doing this to your own rifle. It's a nice improvement. All right, over and out. Thank you again. Take care now.